Hey guys, I'm Shahan from Scott Studio. So today I'm going to show you guys how I created this animation loop. I'm going to show you guys the whole setup from the materials to the lighting and a few camera tracking tricks as well. So you guys can also check my channel to see how I created this animation loop and a bunch of other animation loops as well. So make sure you guys subscribe for all that. And with that said, let's get on with the tutorial. So we're going to select the default scene and delete it with X. Now at a plane, with shift A, tab into edit mode and with alt M merge at center and you are left with one word C so you're gonna move it with G X while pressing control and snap it into the grid over here and now press one in the numpad you go to orthographic view and in the modifiers tab select screw modifier and increase the screw to about two meters and the iteration make it 10 all right tab out of edit mode press the f3 key and type convert and select object convert to and curve from mesh so we have a curve and now i'm going to create a plane shift a create a plane and with s 10 in the keypad, uh, keypad and enter so we have scaled it 10 times and now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees R90 RX90 so that it rotates in the x-axis and now I'm going to move it with GY while pressing control so that it snaps into the grid and snap it over here so that it has moved 10 meters in the y-axis all right so it looks good now I'm going to the geometry tab and increase the depth to about 3 meters 0 0.3 meters and right click shade smooth and with control 2 I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and G Z while pressing control I'm gonna move it up a bit G Z move it up so that it's on top of our plane alright looks good now I'm gonna add array modifier array modifier and put it on top of our subdivision surface modifier select constant offset and deselect relative offset and make it minus uh, 20 in the z-axis and select merge first last and increase the number of meters until you see it's completely merged all right and now i'm going to duplicate this copy and make it minus minus 40 so that it's duplicated in the other side as well so we won't be needing it we you know uh, now so I'm gonna hide it hide the two array modifiers and I'm gonna do the same thing to the plane as well add another modifier uh, for this I'm gonna leave it leave the relative offset and make it 0 in the X and 1 in the Y oh, make it minus 1 and copy it and make it 1 okay and I'm gonna hide those two array modifiers as well so I'm gonna select everything and hide these and start modeling our circle with shift a add a circle and rx 90 I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and tab in edit mode ease to extrude gy move it in the y-axis a bit like this and with control r add two loop cuts in the middle and s y to scale bring it in a bit and e to extrude s shift y 
so that it won't scale in the y-axis I'm going to scale it up and select these two edge loops in the corner but shift and alt and E to extrude again shift uh, S shift Y scale it in scale it in like that and F3 type bridge edge loop and press enter and there you go we have it now with control 2 I'm going to add a subdivision surface marker right click shade smooth now I might bevel the edges I can add a bevel modifier but I prefer beveling it myself so select this edge and this edge control B bevel it this edge control B this edge in the inside control B and looks good I might bevel this edge as well control B and might add another loop cut loop two loop cuts with control R and add the mouse wheel and extrude it out as well so we have something that looks like this and now I'm gonna add a bone with shift A add a single bone in the middle RX 90 I'm gonna rotate that in the x-axis as well so we're going to use the bone to parent the objects, uh, parent the object into our curve. So I'm going to select the circle first and then the bone and control P set parent to object. Now the object has been parent to our bone. So now if you move the object, the bone, the, the bone, the object moves as well. Right. So I'm going to unhide everything else and go to the object constraint properties and add a follow path constraint and I'm going to take follow curve fixed position and select our target ob object the plane which was the curve and uh, select animate path and for this to work it follows our y-axis and now with the object offset we can animate this object okay this looks cool so now i'm gonna un unhide my array modifier in the plane uh, and add my camera with shift a add a camera and i'm gonna unhide these array modifiers as well so i can have a sense of the length of my animation so i think this angle looks good so okay this looks good and uh, with control alt zero I'm gonna place my camera might move it a bit as well select the camera and the G move it somewhere somewhere here so it looks like it's in the center the circle looks like it's in the center so I'm gonna place it like this and I might change the focal length a bit 35 and go to local view and with GZ I can zoom it in a bit all right and now I'm gonna select the plane and SX I'm gonna scale it in the X axis zoom it in a bit 45 45 looks good s x to scale it in the x axis, x -axis a bit more and yeah so now i'm gonna add my first keyframe and add a keyframe in the offset and go to 600 frame and make it one and add a keyframe Alright, I'm gonna make my end keyframe 119 and although it looks like it's moving, it's not. So what I'm gonna do is select our 
curve and add a keyframe I and I'm gonna press N and get my location data and go to 600 frame 600 and make it 0 minus 10 yep minus 10 is good and add a keyframe I so now if you play the animation so now I have to push it down the plane the bottom plane G Z so now if you play the animation you guys can see it's moving yes it's looping as well so now I want my camera to move in while it spirals accordingly so for that I'm going to come out of my camera select the camera and go to the constraints constraints tab and select a tracking track to constraint and select minus Z and also up make it Y now if you play our animation oh you should select the target object make the target circle so you guys can see our camera is moving as well I'm gonna go to the shading tab create a new material uh, select spiral and create a new material Make sure you guys have the node wrangler add-on enabled in add-ons node wrangler enable it and now shift a I'm gonna add a warner texture and control shift and preview my texture and i'm gonna add a color ramp and make it constant pull the specs so that we have a sense of what we're seeing and with select the burner texture control t add a mapping and a texture coordinate node plug the object into the vector and change the euclidean or whatever into ch chibi chip and there you have it i'm going to increase the scale to about 20. plug the color make sure it's the color not the distance and and now I'm going to duplicate the principal BSDF shader and increase the metallic value in this one and add a shift a mix shader plug it in between plug the color to the factor from this and the shader to the bottom shader the bottom and control shift to get our preview now I'm going to decrease the roughness of the bottom one and decrease the roughness of this to about 0 0.1 yeah 0 0.1 looks good and now I'm going to add a bump node and plug the bump and the normal into the normal and add a color ramp color ramp and a nice texture nice texture plug the color into the factor and the color into the height and control shift get preview of what we're seeing and I'm going to move the whites and the blacks close a bit and with control T add another mapping and a texture, texture coordinate node and plug the object into the mapping now I'm going to increase the noise texture scale to about 100 so it looks like this and now we preview it as you can see it's way too bumpy so I'm going to decrease the strength of the bump to about 0 0.05 so there we have something that looks like this it looks good for me now now I'm gonna add 
three materials this first one is going to be a metallic shader increase the metallic value and roughness decrease the roughness to about 0 0.05 and add another uh, material new and I'm gonna leave it white but increase the subsurface uh, way up and tab into edit mode go to face select mode select select these faces and assign it okay looks good and I'm gonna do the same thing select these faces and assign yep looks good and now I'm gonna add another shader this time I'm gonna make it blue select this face with alt select the whole loop the whole yeah the whole loop and assign and assign it as well maybe make it a little bit more dark tab already mode and we have our loop our circle so if you play it now you guys can see it's working now I'm going to do the lighting. I'm going to show you guys how I did the lighting. So for now you guys can save our scene. So I'm just going to name it something, whatever I want. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to add an area lamp with Shift A. Light, area, G, move it up. Scale it up a bit more. So I'm going to render this in cycles because it looks really good in cycles. So go to, go to cycles, GPU, go to the camera view, and I'm going to add a new window. Drag this to add a new window. And go to light settings, increase the power use nodes as well. You can increase the strength to about 600 is it too much g y over here raise a little bit more up six hundred seems like it's too much I'm gonna make it five hundred yep five hundred looks good and I'm going to duplicate this now, move it G X, put some over here, rotate it in the Y axis R Y. And I'm going to make this about 300. Yeah, that looks good. So that's it for this tutorial guys. So if you guys make this tutorial, tag me on your work so I can see them maybe and leave some feedback as well. So follow me on Insta, I'll be posting more of my work there before I upload tutorials. And I have a lot of videos like this in my channel so you guys can check them out as well. And I'll be making 3 videos a week, mostly character modeling videos and animation loops like this. So on Mondays, make sure you guys catch those animation loops and the rest of the week I'll be posting more character modeling videos. So if you guys want to learn how I created this sci-fi hallway scene, you guys can click here. And if you guys want to create more animation loops like this, you guys can click the playlist over here. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you guys liked it, leave a comment and subscribe to this channel. So thank you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.